Hello everyone! Today I will show you how to wrap text around the object in DaVinci Resolve Fusion. For those who don't know me, my name is Kasia and I am creating color grading, motion graphics and VFX tutorials in DaVinci Resolve Fusion. So have a look at my other videos and if you like my channel, hit subscribe. But today I will show you how to wrap text around the round object in DaVinci Resolve Fusion. So first, I will show you how to create a sphere in DaVinci Resolve Fusion and how to add a texture to it. And at the end, we'll be adding and animating our 3D text. And I know that there's a lot of beginners here, but don't worry, I tried to keep everything fairly simple. Let's start. I am in the editing tab in Resolve and we will start from creating the fusion composition. So we will go to the effects library and we will search for the fusion composition. I will drop it onto the timeline and as a default it's 5 seconds long. So I will extend it because I want to have 15 seconds clip. And now I will click on it and I will go to the Fusion tab. Let me expand our node space. And here we've already got the media out node, which is the output. So I will move it to the right. And the output is already placed in the right viewer, which is indicated by this dot here on the right. So we can start creating our sphere. In order to do it, we have to grab the shape 3D from the toolbar and let's drag it down and it's a 3D node, so we'll need the render 3D node connected to it. So once it's highlighted, I can just hit shift space and I will search here for the 3D renderer node. I will click add and move it. And also I will connect my renderer node with the output. Now let's click on the shape 3D node and let's change our shape from the square to sphere. So I'll go to the inspector tab if you have it closed, you just have to click on it to open it. And here in the controls, we will change the shape from plane to sphere. And first thing that we notice is that the edges of the sphere are not smooth enough. And in order to soften them up, we have to increase base and high subvisions like this. And now our shape is perfectly round. Now let's go to the transform. And let's decrease the scale of the sphere to have it within the frame. Like this looks good to me. And then we can, for example, go to the material options here. And we can change the color of the shape. Like this. We have here loads of different ways of changing the color. Then we can use the color sliders as well. But I will undo all of this because I want to show you how you can add different textures to your shape. So I'll go to my media pool. And here I have already imported a lot of different PNGs or JPEGs that I just found online. So let's grab one of them and let's just connect it with the shape. And you can see that it's nicely wrapped around the shape. However, you have to keep in mind that all of these images have got different size. So it may not work perfectly. So for example, when I click on my shape again and I will go to transform and then I will rotate my shape with the Y axis, I can see that there's some space behind it. So it means that our image is not big enough to cover the whole sphere, but it is something very easy to fix. We just have to click on the media in node that is our image. Then we have to click shift space again and we have to grab the transform and add it between media in node and shape node. And then here in the inspector, we can change the size of the image like this. We can go smaller or bigger, whatever we need. So it covers the whole sphere. And then it can happen very often that 
we will have this line on our shape and this is because the square or rectangular images are basically not designed to be placed on the round shape. But if you don't do the full rotation with your sphere, like this, you can just cover it behind and it will look fine. I will show you another example. So let's remove this media in node. And let's grab this picture. And again, we have the same situation here. But it looks very cool when hidden. We just have to compromise when we want to use some free assets from the internet. But actually, I found one picture that will work perfectly. So let's remove this media in node again and let's grab it. These stripes here and here. We can see that it has got the vertical lines anyway. So it hides that point where the picture joins together. We have to fix it a bit here. So let's go to the transform and let's change the scale. Okay, now looks perfect. Let's click on the sphere and let's check it again. Okay, great. And you can also use X axis to rotate it like this or Z axis to rotate it like this, but let's undo it. And now I will show you how you can modify colors. So let's click on our media in node again, then shift space and let's search for the color corrector. Add. And here we can, for example, modify hue. So it will change its colors. We can also play around with these sliders here. Changing contrast, gain or lift. So feel free to try these options. And we can also use the color wheel by dragging the slider around. I would choose the shades I like. Maybe here. Okay. And I will click on my shape to rotate it. And let's see how it looks. Perfect. Now let's animate our shape properly. So first I will change my Z axis like this. I think it will look interesting. And then I will move my cursor to the first frame. Then I will set my first keyframe next to the Y axis. Then I will again move my cursor to the very end of the clip. And I will move the Y axis with the slider to the right. So it rotates a bit. And let's see how it looks. Perfect. Now I will show you how to add the background. So I'll click on my render 3D node and then I'll hit shift space and I'll search for the merge node. Okay. And now we just have to connect the background with this merge node. So I can again grab some of the images from my media pool. And now the problem is that the image is connected as a foreground, which is indicated by green arrow and the sphere is connected as a background. So we have to swap these inputs. So we'll just right click on the merge node and we'll pick swap inputs. Okay. And now, Again, we can add a color corrector node. And again, we can modify this background however we want to. But I'll remove it and I'll connect a simple background from the toolbar. And here, you can also modify colors. You can add some shading to the background whatever you want, but I want just a simple black background. So I will undo all of this. And finally, I will show you how to add text to the animation. So first I will click on my shape 3D node. Then I will hit shift space again and I will grab a merge 3D node this time. Then I will search for a text 3D node and I will connect it with the Merge 3D node. 
Okay. So let's click on our text 3D node and let's type something. For me, it will be color grading insights. And let's place the merge 3D node in the left viewer to be able to see our 3D space. And then we can zoom it in and out by holding the command key and by scrolling with the mouse. So let's make our text smaller. Then we can also change the font. I will go for something quite thick. Railway will work for me. And now we are going to position our text. So first we will place it around the sphere. So let's just click on the layout and let's change the type from point to sphere. And you can't see it in the right viewer, but you can see it in the 3D space. Let's place only text here. So you can see that the text goes nicely around, but it's just too small. So it's hidden behind the sphere. And to change this, we have to increase the width. So let's go up to 1.2 here. Okay. And now we want to place the text in front of the sphere. So let's open the rotation tab here. And let's change the X axis to 90 degrees. And now again, you can't see it here because our text is completely flat, but you can see it in the 3D space. And now we'll go to the transform, then to the rotation here. And we will change the X axis again to minus 90 degrees. Okay. And this is how it looks. So let's go back to the layout and here with the Y axis, we can move our text around the sphere. We can also rotate it with the Z axis left to right. So I will go up to 10 here and we have many more controls in the second transform tab. We can do a bunch of things here. So again, have fun but I'll place it in the middle like this and I'll make it a bit smaller. Okay. But now the text is a bit too flat. So let's go back to text and down here in the extrusion tab, let's increase the extrusion depth. I don't want it to be too thick like this works for me. And in order to make it even more interesting, we have to add some lighting. So let's click on the render 3D node and in the lighting tab, let's enable lighting. And now the composition went black, but it's all fine. This is because we haven't added any lighting effect yet. So let's hit shift space and let's search for the spotlight. Add. And now we can connect it with our Merge 3D node. And then we have to move the light around to be able to see the sphere. So let's go to the Transform tab and let's move the Z axis to the right. And this way we'll move the light further from the object, as you can see here. Okay, looks great. The light adds a lot of definition and here we have other controls to play around with, like this. We can have more black, whatever you want. But the only thing I don't like is this harsh spotlight in the middle. But we can also get rid of it easily. We just have to click on the shape 3D. Then we'll go to the material options, then specular, and we'll reduce the intensity. Perfect. And now our last step is to animate the text. So I'll move my cursor to the frame number one. Then I'll click on my text 3D. Then I'll go to layout. I will move my Y axis to the right like this. I will set up a keyframe. Then I'll move my cursor to the last frame. And then I will change the position of the text. And let's see.
Great. So now we can go to Spline. We'll tick the shaped 3D and text values. We'll make the viewer smaller and we'll highlight the keyframes and hit S on the keyboard in order to soften the transition. And now we'll go back to the edit tab and we'll add nice long cross dissolves on both sides of the clip to make it go from and to black smoothly. And now we can watch the final result full screen. Thanks so much for watching my videos guys, I hope that you like them. If you do, hit subscribe and if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. See you soon.